Dr. Keith Bossel is a professor of neurology and director of the Mary S. Easton Center for Alzheimer's Disease Research at UCLA. Now, Dr. Bossel investigates Alzheimer's disease and related disorders with a focus on brain rhythm abnormalities and translational therapies. And so welcome, doctor. Great to have you here. And Thank you. I mean, I just think Alzheimer's seems like such a big challenge. Uh, where are we now with Alzheimer's research and any kind of treatment? This is really a landmark year in our field. Just about a year ago, the, uh, there was an announcement of a drug that can slow the disease course potentially called Aduhelm. With the rollout of that medication, uh, we learned a lot of lessons. Uh, one lesson we learned is that as a medical community, we're not really prepared to administer a drug like this to the, the group of patients that would be eligible for it. Uh, there were some side effects that we were worried about as well. However, just recently, in the last month, there was an announcement of another uh, medication called lecanemab. Uh, the top line results look very promising that it can slow the disease course. We will learn more about this drug in the next month. Okay, um, so it slows the course. So what do we know about it? Do you take this, at what point in the Alzheimer's uh, journey do you, take, do you start taking this drug? We're learning more and more that we need to begin treatment as early as possible. We, in these clinical trials, the patients that seem to benefit the best were patients that were in this category called mild cognitive impairment. And what that means is they're just beginning to notice memory loss or some problems with language or some problems with their visual skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, when these symptoms come to the attention of their doctor, they often get referred to a neurologist and then can get a, a full workup. Yeah. It just seems like it's such a, a difficult nut to crack, this Alzheimer's. I mean, it, it's, yeah. if somebody can find a cure, I mean, it's just going to be hugely important financially and emotionally and all this. So I know there's a lot of hard work on it. Well, what are you doing specifically with it? Well, my research studies this phenomenon that occurs during sleep called silent epileptic activity. Mm. Our group was the first to discover that patients with Alzheimer's disease can actually develop silent seizure-like activity during their sleep. And this seizure activity can actually impact their memories over the long term. And just recently we published a phase 2A clinical trial showing that low doses of an anti-seizure drug can actually improve learning and memory mm -hmm. in these patients that are having detectable epileptic activity during their sleep. Interesting. Now, there's also some studies that say multivitamins can help as well. Tell me about those. What do we know about that? There are a number of ways that we can improve brain health, and multivitamins is just one of them. Um, I, I believe that there was a report just recently that was reported widely about a multivitamin that showed um, ability to slow cognitive decline in people that were cognitively normal as they were just aging. And uh, we think that the group that benefited the most were those that had some other um, risk factors for cardiovascular disease as well as brain disease, including history of heart uh, problems. And so we think that maybe the multivitamins are improving overall health and by virtue of that, helping brain health. Uh -huh. Any kind of multivitamin or was there something specifically people I believe the one that they used in this uh, <laughs> trial was a, a general multivitamin that you could get over the counter. It yeah. included a long list of things. Just a long list of things. So just making sure you have all the nutrients and minerals and everything that we Correct. need. Correct. I mean, is there anything yet we've seen that works with Alzheimer's? That works. Yeah, like anything that's delayed. Because I know, I, I think mm -hmm. I told you when we met before that my dad had Alzheimer's and he was taking some medicine and, you know, maybe it delayed things a little. Since I've begun uh, in this field, we've been able to provide symptomatic treatments. These include uh, a drug that can help with symptoms early in the disease as well as uh, help maintain, people maintain independence later in the disease. Mm -hmm. These drugs uh, may not show um, a strong effect immediately, but uh, when people stop taking the medication, we can see a decline. And so we generally try to keep people on these medications throughout the course. And so we're, now we're adding to that potentially with a disease modifying drug, which can actually slow the disease course. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a drug that can actually change the underlying biology of the disease mm -hmm. by helping remove these amyloid plaques, yeah. which think, seem to be a, a, one of the major culprits yeah. of the disease. Now, um, Alzheimer's gets all the attention, but are there other neurological disorders that people are working on or that um, we might be able to have treatments or cures for soon? Alzheimer's disease rarely occurs alone. Mm -hmm. In fact, most of the time it occurs 
together with vascular dementia or Lewy body dementia, which is a form of Parkinson's disease. In some cases, people do not have Alzheimer's disease. They have another rarer condition called frontal temporal dementia. And that occurs in younger patients. It associates less with the amyloid disease, and it associates more with a tau protein and some other problems. And so we're developing new drugs that can target those molecules. They, they may work for Alzheimer's disease as well as some of these other diseases exist sometimes with Alzheimer's yeah. disease. Well, thank you so much for the information and thank you for what you're doing um, because I know this is a, a huge challenge that our society is facing. So thank you, Dr. Vossel. Thank you so much. Thank you.